he showed a pretty good example for the whole team and even our like even our team managers and everybody for DC were kind of looking at what he was doing and kind of like okay like we need to step it up like there's a young kid coming from Norway and bringing his own filmer around and making stuff happen and he was getting more attention through these social media channels and website than we were getting as a company DC you know so I think for a young kid that was pretty really impressive we were snowboarding in Norway summer Sweden Folgefona it's pretty damn nice he was the first to do a frontside triple on the park jump and he was the first to do a backside triple in the backing pit and uh, I was there for that and uh, I think maybe he warmed up on the jump with a frontside double <laughs> and back then it's 10 years ago it was already crazy that was crazy we were like what the fuck and then uh, a couple more jumps and there's a triple you know <laughs> he didn't tell anybody he was gonna do it and all of a sudden he just woof, 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 woof. we were like no what <laughs> I almost missed it! <laughs> 2006, when I was filming for MacDogs Follow Me Around, and Torstein was filming with my homies from Norway and Finland for this, uh, this homies project called Storbis, that I was sort of producing as well. And uh, I was just supposed to hang out with the crew and kind of meet the guys and uh, hang out. And, uh, and then there was a new kid called Torstein. And uh, I, I remember there was sort of a big jump build in the park and I was doing back sevens and stuff and I felt like I was the man, you know, and then Torsten shows up and just does a cap cap nine, front nine, back nine, and switch back side nine and everything just looked freaking perfect. Like it was almost hard to tell like which stance he was riding because I like technique wise it just it, it was unbelievable. I knew that guy was gonna be the shit. You know? I don't know. It was just weird. I was kinda like almost offended, you know, I'm like you know, because I was filming for MacDog and he was filming for his little production and then he was just like fucking killing it on that jump. I was like, dude, that guy's gonna go places. I just remember thinking that I actually never seen anyone ride that good. So I feel like I was a little bit scared of that guy. You know, he's like, fuck, he's gonna take my sponsors. But, but it's all good. He's a good dude. I wouldn't say he was in the shadows, but like, like once in a while he was always come up with something like really ridiculous and uh, mind melting. So he was one of those guys. Remember that frontside triple cork? That was just fucking out of this league. My mindset was just like tunnel vision classic. You know, my world was really small. Um, so everything to me was really simple because it was only snowboarding. The one instance that really jumps out at me was the triple cork. He went and filmed that with practically a blown ankle. I mean, his ankle was not well. He had missed over a month of filming, but he had this jump in mind that he had to do, he had to put down. And he did it in secret. He didn't tell me. And that, you know, we talked about everything, but this was one that he kept under wraps. I think, you know, it was just those guys going off, filming it, capturing it, and he knew the power of that footage. He always felt that that creativity combined with you know, really doing some game-breaking, game-changing snowboarding. He always knew it had its, its place and he leveraged it really well. It was really awesome. And I knew how beat up he was for that. So I was almost, I couldn't believe he landed it, uh, knowing how hurt he was. He told me about this plan he had about doing a new trick that no one has done before him. After sitting in the car with him for eight hours, he told me it was triple cork, <laughs> and uh, and um, he didn't tell any of his friends. Neither his closest friends knew that he was at Polifona doing this. Didn't want the pressure to actually to to people know that he was there at all. He just didn't want any pressure to actually pull this trick off, and and uh, so yeah. It was the perfect kicker for, for it as well, and it was a crazy day. On the fourth try, he actually crushed his ankle totally, and he just kept on trying and trying. This was during daytime on an open ski resort, so people were just stopping and like, what, they never seen this before. And so it was, 
Yeah, that was probably the coolest memory I had at Thorstein. <laughs> One of the funniest things I remember seeing was it was like when he did the first ever triple cork in the X Games, and then his interview, he was like, I don't remember what he said exactly, but he said something like, yeah, you know what, like that doesn't even count. That was like a, it was pretty much a 180 triple backflip. Like that doesn't count as a triple cork. And I was like, yes, that's so awesome. He just won the gold medal and he's like calling out his own trick being like, that sucked. I don't, I'm not even proud of that. So whatever, at least I won, but he's like, that trick stunk <laughs> pretty much. So I thought that was amazing. That was one of the other cool things. Like he landed the first ever triple cork on a park jump the summer previous to that X Games. And that was one of the first like, not like an act of defiance, but kind of like a, a the new step into like the modern age of YouTube and digital, the digital format of, you know, YouTube, Instagram, stuff like that, where he's like, you know what, I just landed this. I'm going to put it out right now so everybody can see it. And, and like, I don't care about having it in my video part. It can still be in my video part. It'll still be in some movies, but it's got to go up now because it's, something like that well he worked hard for and it was groundbreaking like completely groundbreaking at the time i first met tor uh well, it's a long time ago when he was uh, up and coming this up and coming kid in norway i think he was maybe 18 years old he was already really good back then <laughs> tor san's always been really on it you know when he's whether he's snowboarding or he's working out or he's doing anything that's going to push him you know, forward towards his goal. So he's also always so uh, determined. Everybody, you know, mentions the same, kind of the same things that he's so focused, you know. You know, when he's doing a contest or when he used to do contests, you couldn't even speak to him. He wouldn't, he wouldn't respond because he was such in his own zone, in his own head. I knew him really well, so I knew that that was just the way he was when he was he was constantly thinking about his, you know, what he was going to do in a snowboard, how he was going to plan out his whole day. He was just in in this mode that I think some people thought that he was maybe not. He was maybe ignoring him, ignoring people. But I think he was just uh, he kind of just spaced out from from the real world, and he was so focused on what he was going to going to do in his performance. Yeah, the dubstep was definitely influenced by Torstein. I hate dubstep, to be honest. It just makes my stomach churn. Um, but uh, to each his own. I mean, I, I'm a metalhead, so you're talking to the wrong guy about dubstep. I grew up listening to Black Sabbath and Slayer and Iron Maiden, and you know, so dubstep is completely off my radar. It does it does look pretty cool to the snowboarding, I guess. It's, it's got some cool beats and cut points and all that stuff. Um, so again, that's you know Torstein, you know picking his own vision with that. Sorry, Torstein, still love you. <laughs>